guys, we are only a couple days away from possibly the most anticipated earnings of the entire earnings season and probably the most anticipated earnings for Tesla stock in its history on January 29th, 2020. After the bell, Tesla will be reporting their Q4 2019 earnings. This is the most anticipated earnings probably in Tesla's history. And the reason being is the stock has been an absolute beast. Like look at the three month chart there. They have it up on Tesla's website. Look at the stock price the past three months, up, up and away. And when you get that type of move in a stock price in such a short amount of time, here we're looking at the six months you pretty much need a 10 out of 10 when it comes to your earnings report if you want that stock to keep up momentum, okay? This happens in the stock market all the time. Sometimes a company will, will even beat on, on revenue, beat on EPS, and people are like, what the heck, that stock price went down. Well, a lot of times it's because the stock already ran up huge into earnings, and so unless that company came out with a 10 out of 10, blow you out of the water, unreal, unbelievable earnings report, you know, likely it's going down, okay? And so something like this could happen to Tesla stock, you know, I kind of drew my own little graph there. If the earnings report was just okay, and especially obviously if it was bad, which, you know, we're gonna go into the numbers here on my Q4 expectations, but you know, the, the stock price could do something like that. It has ran a lot, okay? So in this video, we're doing a Q4 2019 earnings preview. We're gonna run through all this. I'm gonna give you my opinion on exactly what I expect from these earnings earnings, revenue-wise, EPS-wise, guidance, all those sorts of things, okay? So we need to start out this, by the way, smash that thumbs up button if you're enjoying today's video, okay? So the first thing we gotta start out with is what do we know? What do we already know? What is the concrete data we have around this, okay? And the reason you gotta think about this first is if you're trying to figure out anything around numbers, you gotta figure out what do we know so far, okay? So obviously the Shanghai Gigafactory is already producing vehicles out of it, okay? I mean, it started producing vehicles probably about, uh, actually a little over a month ago, a month to a month and a half ago, started producing vehicles out of it, but no customer deliveries in China had began until January 7th, and this quarter ended December 30th, which means essentially any Model 3s that were produced out of the Shanghai Gigafactory, those ones are not counted toward deliveries, and they are not recognized for revenue, at least this past quarter for Q4 2019, which is obviously what we're talking about in this video. They will be reported, obviously obviously in the upcoming quarter, Q1 of 2020, okay? So what do we know here? Well, Tesla already announced their vehicle production and their delivery numbers, okay? In the fourth quarter, this was on January 3rd, by the way, 2020, they put out this. In the fourth quarter, we achieved record production of almost 105,000 vehicles and record deliveries of approximately 112,000 vehicles. In 2019, we delivered approximately 367,500 vehicles, 50% more than the previous year and in line with our full year guidance. That is unbelievable, okay? But obviously we're talking about quarters here, so the, the overall year is just cool to look at and kind of judge obviously as a long-term investor in the company. But here we're talking about quarterly numbers, okay? So as we look at this here, Model S and X had 19,450 deliveries. So if we're talking about numbers, it's more important to look at deliveries rather than production because deliveries are how revenue is actually accounted for, okay? So 14% of those were subject to lease accounting, okay, when it comes to the Model S and the Model X, which essentially means there were 16,727 pure sales when it comes to the Model S and the Model X, which obviously are the higher priced Teslas out there, okay? So if we go ahead and run some numbers here, in my opinion, average selling price on those will be about $88,000 when you're talking about the S and X average selling price. Obviously you can get, you know, some S's, you know, for under 80,000 X's usually, or you're looking at 80 and up. And, and some of the X's end up going to hundred plus thousand. And actually a lot of the S's go to 90 plus thousand. So I'm being, I think a little bit conservative with ASP zero. I'm doing ASP of 88,000 for each S and X. Okay. So if we go ahead and run some numbers there, 16,727 pure sales, $88,000 average selling price. That would be just, you know, a little under one, $1.5 billion roughly of pure sales of the S and X during the quarter. Now, once again, we don't know for sure what the average selling price will come out at, but that's just what I'm running for a number there, okay? Now, if we go ahead and move over to Big Dog, which Big Dog is the Model 3. This is obviously the one that is, you know, Tesla's premier product at the moment and it was what's driving the whole business. And no pun intended when I say driving the whole business, okay? So deliveries for the Tesla Model 3 
in the quarter were 92,550. 7% of those Model 3s were subject to lease accounting. So it's interesting, the, 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 the more affordable vehicles, it seems like less and less of those are leases compared to like the S's and the X's, the higher price ones, okay? So, which means essentially there are about 86,000 pure sales of the Model 3, okay? So if we go ahead and run numbers on those, I'm doing an average selling price here of about 50,000. Obviously the Model 3 starts at 40,000, but then once you start doing some upgrades, some different wheels, different color schemes, whether it be on the exterior, the interior, the numbers start to really run up pretty fast. Never mind if you go a model up. The next model up starts pretty close to 50,000. Then if you're talking about you want the highest end model, which is the performance, now you're talking about 56,000, somewhere around there roughly. Once again, you add on some features here and there. So average selling price, I think, will be around $50,000 roughly. It could be, you know, $1,000 cheaper, like a $49,000 ASP on the Model 3s could be like a $51,000. Uh, we'd have to see where it all shakes out. I think $50,000 is, is around what the numbers will be, okay? So if we do 86,000 pure sales times an average selling price of $50,000, we're getting $4.3 billion there from just pure sales of the Tesla Model 3, okay? So now we have those numbers figured out, so we go ahead and take $4.3 billion, the Model 3 numbers of pure sales, not, not you know, talking about leases. We do another, you know, $1.5 billion for the S and X pure sales, and we get about $5.8 billion, roughly, of pure revenue from just the sales there, okay? So now what we wanna try to figure out, we wanna go ahead and figure out what are analysts expecting for this quarter when when it comes to overall revenue. So analysts are expecting right around $7 billion, like technically just above $7 billion. The low estimate is $6.46 billion. The high estimate is $7.54 billion, okay? Keep in mind a year ago, they did $7.23 billion. So the, you know, if they did what analysts are expecting, there's about a 3% drop year over year. You know, obviously, you know, last Q4 was in insane, needless to say, okay? So essentially, if analysts on average are expecting $7 billion, and we're at five point eight as of right now from the pure sales of the S and X in the three, then essentially we're in a situation where there's $1.2 billion missing, okay? So now keep in mind, although lease accounting is a little bit different from you know how it's recognized as revenue and when it's recognized and things like that, we're looking at about 2,723 S and X's that are subject to lease accounting that you know some revenue will be recognized. We just don't know exactly how much. And then when it comes to Model 3, we have 6,478 Model 3's that are subject to lease accounting. So we'll have some sort of revenue numbers there. We just don't know the exact number. So now with Tesla having a leasing side of their business, which they did not have in the same quarter last year, now it can kind of murk up the numbers on terms of it's a little harder to know exactly what numbers they're gonna do based upon the, their production and their deliveries because of now the lease accounting there, okay? So it does confuse things a little bit, okay? Now, we also have a lot more wild cards than just the lease accounting, okay? We have, we have something like this. They came out with this at the end of December, okay? December 19th, Tesla launches $2,000 acceleration boost for 3.9 seconds, zero to 60 in the Model 3 dual motor, where essentially customers could go Go right on their Tesla app and essentially pay two thousand dollars, and there would be an over-the-air update for this acceleration boost. You know, things like this are complete wild cards because you just have no clue. Like, how many people are doing this? Is it like 05 percent of the Tesla owners are doing something like this that would be interesting? Is it like one percent? Is it like three percent? Is it five percent? Is it ten percent? We have no clue. Okay, I saw an electric. They did a poll and said, "Are you going to buy Tesla's acceleration upgrade?" Okay. Uh, 47% of people said no, another, you know, almost 30% said not sure yet, about 23% said yes, that was out of 11,541 votes. I can almost guarantee you 23% of Tesla owners did not go ahead and do that $2,000 upgrade. Although if that did happen, that would be a huge, you know, revenue boost. So we don't know, something like that is another wild card that we just don't know. Are we talking this is a really, really small percentage of people did this, or are we talking like this is actually a few percent of Tesla owners actually went out there and did this? So this is, this is $2,000 too. So it's not like it's a small amount of money. And keep in mind, there's a lot of Model 3s on the road now. So even if let's say 1% or 2% of Tesla owners actually did this, 
still a very, very large number, okay? You have obviously things like if you want to get the most upgraded autopilot version, if you didn't buy it when you got the car, you can go ahead and upgrade that, right? It's like 8,000 bucks for the full self-driving package. So once again, this is another wild card. Like how many people did this in the past quarter? Are we talking like a few hundred customers? Are we talking a few thousand customers might've done this? We're talking $8,000. That's a lot of revenue. If let's say it's, you know, thousands and thousands of customers went ahead and did this in the quarter. And that's obviously something that could boost revenue in a big way. We, it's another wild card out there. We don't know exactly how many people are doing that. Another super unappreciated thing with Tesla is now the service revenues that will start pouring in. Now, most Teslas on the road right now have full warranties on them, meaning essentially if they go in for service, there's like no real revenue recognized there from Tesla standpoint. But keep in mind, if somebody ever gets in an accident in Tesla, which keep in mind, it, you know, it, accidents happen less in a Tesla than pretty much any other car, but there are still accidents, whether we're talking fender benders, whether we're talking major accidents, whenever things like that happen, obviously Tesla yeah, has to produce those parts out of there and they recognize service revenue. And when you have a bigger and bigger fleet over time, the service numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes. I mean, just ask Apple, you know, what happens as, as you know, uh, more and more devices got out there for Apple, their service revenues continue to climb and climb and climb and climb. So that's a super unappreciated thing. You know, there's just a lot more Tesla's out on the road that things could go wrong with that could get into accidents or maybe aren't under warranty anymore and maybe something breaks on them. And when the car's not under warranty, that has to come out of the customer's pocket. Obviously, you know, there's service revenue recognized there. So that's a super unappreciated side of the business, the service business. We'll see, you know, what shakes out there, but that's another super big wild card and, and that's gonna be a bigger and bigger part of Tesla's business over time. Keep in mind, a lot of these, these players, the Fords, the General Motors, they make a lot of money from the service department as they get millions and millions of cars out there on the road, okay? Now, something very important, if we wanna go ahead and look at the last quarter, which is Q3 2019, we see a few other things here that are also gonna put some wild cards into these Q4 numbers, okay? So if you look at their energy business, they're taking that more and more serious, okay? Energy storage deployment reached an all-time high, they said, during the last quarter, okay? Additionally, we have recently introduced the Tesla Mega Pack, which is this massive battery pack pre-assembled in the Giga factory as a single unit. Such packaging allows for faster deployment and lower overall installation cost. First deliveries are planned to begin in Q4 of 2019. Oh, this quarter we are just in. And are we talking like five to $10 million worth of these mega packs were sold? Are we gonna talk about tens of millions of dollars worth were sold? Are we talking like a hundred million dollars? This is another thing that is a wild card that we just don't know, okay? They also say, we also launched a commercial solar configuration for small and medium enterprises with standardized and transparent pricing. Solar deployments have started to grow sequentially once again. In Q3, we deployed 43 megawatts of solar, 48% more than the prior quarter. So we know Tesla is starting to ramp up their solar business in a big way again. And so this is another wild card. How much solar business did they do in this past quarter? They're growing this business once again. It should be the, whatever numbers they do for solar, battery packs, anything across the board, whatever numbers they did in Q4 of 2018, the Q4 2019 numbers should be substantially bigger. So that's another wild card out there. And then you have something like the Tesla insurance product. Obviously it's a product that's mostly just in California right now that continues to be put out there. And so you have a ton of wild cards here okay now you guys know I live in Las Vegas in Las Vegas we we like to you know uh, put odds on different things out there okay so if I had to put odds on the revenue number for this quarter Q4 2019 I would say there was about a 60% chance they would beat the numbers okay if I was a bet man I, I would put my money on, on you know more toward the chances that they beat earnings rather than miss earnings I'd say there's about a 60% chance as far as beating revenue okay so you know uh, needless to say I think they'll beat on revenue, all right? Now, if we go ahead and look at EPS expected by analysts, this gets very, very interesting, okay? So analysts on average are expecting $1.72 as far as the EPS for Tesla in Q4 2019. Low estimate was 80 cents. The high estimate is $2.57, okay? Year ago EPS, they did $1.93. 
I have a hard time seeing them not doing a bigger number EPS wise than what they basically did last year in the same quarter because I believe average selling prices are around the same. I believe Tesla's continue to bring down cost of the vehicles when it comes to cost of production, when it comes to you know just being able to produce the vehicles faster, cheaper, less labor, and all those sorts of things. I think there's a pretty decent probability that they could end up coming in with a $2.50 plus EPS number. A big wild card here is that Tesla did a deal with Fiat Chrysler back in May, which essentially is like $2 billion in credits that can be applied, you know, at different times. And so we don't know like when Tesla would apply that, but that's all like, like you know, numbers that would go straight toward profit. So this is another wild card that we just don't know, but I can tell you, uh, the number that would be crazy, that if you're really thinking about an EPS related number, that if they hit this EPS number, the stock's climbing a 600 plus, in my personal opinion, that magical number is $3. If somehow they did $3 plus in earnings per share in Q4 2019, which I, I have a trouble seeing that, I'm thinking more like a 250-ish number if they be, but if they did a $3 plus number in this past quarter, you know, watch out for 600. That's all I have to say about that, okay? Now, the other important thing, other than obviously revenue and EPS, so I'm expecting basically a revenue beat and an EPS beat, okay? I'm expecting a double beat. The other important thing to look at is what's expected for the upcoming quarter as far as revenue goes. Analysts are expecting for the upcoming quarter $6.73 billion of revenue for Tesla to do. That would be 48% growth. That's really, really strong growth analysts are expecting there. Keep in mind, Q1 of 2019, was a really rough quarter. You know, they did 4.54 billion. You know, everybody thought, you know, Tesla was done or something like that. Um, it looks like demand is much stronger going into Q1 of this year than it was last year, let's put it that way. And on top of that, obviously you have the Shanghai Gigafactory. This is the biggest difference maker. You know, there's talk that they're already doing a thousand plus cars per week out of the Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory. And so any commentary we get from Elon Musk or the Tesla man management team in general around what might transpire in Q1 of 2020, that's going to be a huge thing as well when it comes to if you're thinking about does the stock keep up its momentum, does it run to 600 plus, or does it drop back down to let's say the 400s. But I can tell you if we're talking about a stock that goes to 600s, the only thing that would get that stock there is a 10 out of 10 earnings report. If they have such a blockbuster earnings that they blow down the doors on revenue and a especially on EPS, and they have really strong commentary around guidance, and it's a 10 of 10 quarter, 600's coming, but outside of that scenario, likely the stock will stay around here or ultimately fall, especially if it's just an okay earnings, because when you're talking about a stock that's ran this much in such a short amount of time, if you just come in with okay earnings, you get slapped. That's just the way it works in the stock market, but, but if you can come in with that crazy number, you get some pretty crazy results in the stock price, guys. So anyways, I want to hear your guys' opinion on what do you think they did in Q4 2019, revenue number-wise, EPS number. I would love to see your guys' estimates and your best guesses down there. Maybe one of you guys will accurately predict the revenue number they did and EPS number before these earnings come out. And also, let me know what you guys think for guidance for this upcoming quarter in Q1 of 2020. I would love to hear from you guys on what your expectations are down there. All right, smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this detailed video on a, you know, a uh, earnings preview for Tesla stock. I can do this on Tesla stock in the future if you guys are interested. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.